let's go ahead and do this. This is Self-Publishing with Dale here on YouTube. And uh, if you want to learn more about writing and publishing books that sell, make sure, of course, that you subscribe. And uh, in any event, uh, you will notice, uh, if you happen to be tuning in here, the live chat is for members only, YouTube channel members. If you're not familiar with the channel membership yet, it's kind of like Patreon, but on YouTube. And it's kind of nice because then you're not going off the platform. And it really does help out this channel extremely well. Uh, so there's a number of tiers that you can help uh, do this to help support the channel, everything from two bucks up to five bucks and beyond. Go take a look at that. You hit the join button down below or go inside the description. There's a link inside the description as well to the channel memberships. You can get more details. There's a whole video describing all that you get. Uh, and part of that, getting that is you're going to be able to chat on comments, uh, live comment answering like this. Uh, we've done this a good handful of times already and it seems like people seem to be enjoying it. Um, on the replays, of course, you're not a channel member. You can still leave comments. So that's the nice thing about watching this on the replay. Um, but uh, yeah, this is kind of a good backseat, uh, behind the scenes look into, you know, what I do here on this channel. So, um, you know, uh, a lot of people found it very fascinating, uh, some of the stuff that I, I deal with on a regular basis. So I thought I'd go ahead and we'll just take another peek. I just want to let you know ahead of time, I do try to keep this, this channel family friendly, but these specific live broadcasts, it, it, all bets are off because sometimes comments can become either crass or have improper language. And sometimes uh, I might go off on a rant and uh, I'm hoping that won't be the case today because it's a beautiful Friday morning. I want to say what's up to SL Michael, Samantha, how you doing, Samantha? It's great to see you. And Kevin McGuire, yeah, it's an early morning. Um, you know, actually be done about like 930 before, but yeah, I went ahead. I thought I would just get a jump start on this here today. So let's get these comments banged out here, folks. So I'm just going to switch over here. We're gonna scroll in so everybody can kind of read it. For a little bit of context, you can actually see here on the right hand side, the actual video that the person's commenting on. And then right here is going to be the comment and the person. You're gonna see this little red thing right here. That means the person is subscribed. If you see, for instance, though, like a banana sticker like Steven Serrell here, you'll see he's a channel member. These type of uh, comments actually get highlighted over in the uh, channel membership. So they actually take priority, believe it or not. Uh, my assistant and I try to make sure that those folks are taken care of first and foremost, especially since they're contributing to this channel. So, um, all right, let's get to answering some of these comments. This very first one's from Damien. He's been publicly subscribed to his channel for three months. He says, hello, Dale, hope you're doing great. Could you please tell how long it will take Amazon to transfer royalties to the Payoneer account? I don't know. I, I don't use Payoneer, so I have no foggy idea. Are there any other methods non-US citizens can use to receive Amazon Kindle payments? Sadly, I don't know. Uh, Payoneer is the only one that I've heard of, so I can say, sadly, no, this is outside my wheelhouse. Sorry. But thanks for, this, for being a subscriber for the past three months. All right, reply, there we go. And he gets a heart, he gets a thumbs up. Great question. Okay, so Marth Bell says, uh, well-deserved, truly an amazing book, thanks again. This is actually kind of a fun part here. This is stories. If none of you have, have seen this yet before, it's available over on YouTube Mobile. So what you'd end up having to do here, let me go ahead and I'll show you. You go over to YouTube, the mobile app, okay? And then you would find my channel all right, so you see the channel, and then you'll see my profile picture up here. Tap that profile picture, so then you can be able to see, you'll be able to see exactly what I'm talking about here. So it'll show you all the, the latest stories, and so now I just need to peel through some of these and see where Samarth's uh, comment is at. Let's see here. There, there he is. So here's what I'll do is I'm going to answer it right now here. So I'm going to hit reply to story. And see, he said, well-deserved, truly an amazing. Okay, so I, since I'm washed out, I gotta tap my face. All right, there we go. Hey, Samar, thank you so much. I appreciate your undying support. It's been so freaking cool of you. Uh, you've been around with me for years, and so well-deserved. I, I, I thank you for saying that, but uh, super, super happy to have it, and uh, you're welcome on the giveaway. Samarth actually had one, uh, one of the books. Now, Samarth lives overseas, and big shout out to you, buddy. Uh, 
And uh, man, I'll tell you, anytime I do a giveaway and someone lives overseas, and this is no slight on anybody living overseas, a piece of my soul dies because, you know, if I send out, let's say, for instance, like a book, um, it, it will cost me 25 bucks just to send that book. Now, if I do it stateside here, it's like $3. Like, no, no issue right there. So, yeah, uh, anytime I do a giveaway and you happen to be overseas, please do me the huge favor of sharing it on social media and tagging me because <laughs> that's, that's a lot of dang money, man. Uh, so, at any rate, uh, so I just hit post. Let's go back over here to the screen. And you'll notice uh, it says here, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the thumbs up and a heart. And we've just essentially replied there. Um, okay, so Andrew responded to another one. Looking forward to it. If you think it merits a video, seems like everyone I know either is a published author or I'm almost done with my book year after year after year. Um, I, this was a response to my response, so I'm just going to go ahead and give him a thumbs up and a heart. Stephen Sarrell looks like I gave him a thumbs up and a heart, so I must have already responded to that. Nikki Baxter. Uh, okay, so I have an illustrated cover, which I did myself on the front of my books. Well, how would I know if the cover's adequate? Uh, usually, you'll know. If you could just place your book amongst the other best sellers in your niche, and it seems to, to match the other ones, then you're great. If it's clashing and it doesn't seem to fit, you got a problem. Do you have to have a certain cover from them to print your book? And... Do I have to design for the back book? Back of the book. Um, okay, so you'll know based on the other covers in your niche. Place your book among the top 20 books for your category. Does it match? If so, great. If not, fix it. Do you have to have a certain cover for them to print for your book? Yes, a book cover. Haha. Got to throw in a couple jokes, right? Can't be serious all the time. Uh, they have specific guidelines you need to follow. To follow. Just Google it up. And, and if, if for some reason I ever tell you, like, just Google it up inside the comments, it's not me trying to be a, a an ass. I'm not trying to be funny or anything else like that. Like, literally, Google it up. Like, this is, like, sometimes one of the things that I, I will do every now and then if someone stumps me, I just bust out Google and I'll just look it up and I'll just dig in and make sure I find it from a good, reliable source. Generally speaking, I like to try to stray away from places like Wikipedia for a good source, but every now and then it might be the only thing that you have. But in instances like this, just Google up the answer because like, they have an entire resource area for you on KDP for creating your own print covers. So, All right, so let's do this. Uh, yes, book cover, they have specific guidelines. And do I have to design the back of the book? Yes, you need to design the back front and spine for a print cover. All right. And Nikki has not been subscribed, so Nikki, you do not get kudos from me. Nikki, what you doing? Come on now. Maybe you don't have it publicly stated on here. But thank you so much for the comment though, Nikki. That's really cool. Okay, so it looks like Nikki's been hopping, busy. Do a little bit of, uh, oh, okay, so this is on the same same one. Thank you so much for the step-by-step -step guide. Being a creative writer with dyslexia, these videos are very helpful. Thank you, Nikki. One question, if the book has copyrights, once we upload, okay, it has a copyright. Um, and uh, right as soon as you create your very first keystroke, as soon as you do that very first keystroke of anything that you are making, it is officially having a copyright on it. Uh, if you mean registering a copyright, that's a completely different vehicle altogether. That's a completely different beast. Uh, you know, registering a copyright can run uh, run upwards of I think 55, 65 bucks, something like that here in the United States. And um, do you need to have it? 
No, but in instances of litigation, you're going to need to make sure that you obtain it before you go into the court of law to prove that you actually have the copyright registered. There's other ways to know that you have a poor man's copyright, which is essentially no registration, and that would be uh, any kind of dating on any uh, soft copies that you have. So this is always a good idea that you hold on to the original manuscript, even if it's bowling shoe ugly. You want to make sure you hang on to it for sure. But uh, let's see here. So one question, if the copyright has, if the book has copyright, once we upload it into KDP, why would we need digital rights management to protect the ebook? That is for pirates. Um, it's digital rights management is just one of those ones. It just creates an inconvenience for your customers. This is my opinion. This is how I feel about it. I would say do your own due diligence and see what digital rights management means to you. Essentially what it does is it, it supposedly safeguards your manuscript from pirates from taking it. But the thing is, if someone wants your manuscript, if someone wants your book, and they're a pirate, they know what to do. Digital rights management is super easy to break. In fact, I recommend as soon as you're done watching this video, just look it up on YouTube. Look how, how to hack digital rights management on an ebook. I guarantee you're going to find a ton of videos just here on YouTube alone showing how to break digital rights management. It's super easy. Um, do I recommend you doing that? No, but it's just one of those extra hoops. And here's the thing is, it saddles the actual book buyers with additional issues, okay? Because then they can't be able to share it among other devices or they're limited to the number that they share it to. And if I buy an ebook and I want to read it on this device, not kidding, this device, this device, <laughs> this device, this device, Alexa, what's the temperature outside today? And that device over there. Alexa, shut up. All right. I always like telling Alexa to shut up. So it, it really sucks when you're, you're saddled with the digital rights management as a reader. So all you're doing is just creating this extra hoop for the people that are actually buying. So Nikki happened to be watching this. That's just my opinion. You go ahead, if you want to set it up, do digital rights management. But the issue is, as soon as you hit publish, you cannot shut it off on that specific version of that book. If you want to shut it off, you got to delist that book, and republish it underneath a different I I I ASIN altogether. So uh, just be careful about that. And digital rights management is only in regards to ebooks, of course. And when you say he careful, when you click into that, you sounded like it was something to be aware of. Can you explain further why we must be careful when clicking that service? So let me do this. Let's see here. Hang on a second. Because I'm answering this one live, this is perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm actually going to link to today's video. So Nikki, you can get to see all this stuff here for yourself. I'm going to go ahead and get shareable link. All right. So here we go. Here, Nikki, I answered your question live on the air. Watch about 10 minutes in. Boom. There. It's such a detailed answer that I almost feel like it's just better for you just to kind of jump here. So what's up, Nikki? Thank you so much for the support. I really do appreciate it. And, and you, you better be subscribed. I want to hear from you. You better put inside the comments that you're subscribed to me. Um, so uh, there we go. Let's get forward here. KT Samoa. Candid Cashville deletes comment to Nikki. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> uh, I didn't see that you had one on here. You're not working on the comments this morning, are you, Ava? Hopefully not. It costs $85 to send a three pound box here. Yes, yes, it's nuts, right, Kevin? Yeah, shipping costs seem like a racket. It sure does. Let's see here, hang on a second. Ava said, um, I usually try to slide in on Friday, so there's not a bunch of general questions, but Dale's early today, so I had to delete my answer, LOL. 
<laughs> You're so awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, uh, generally speaking, when I, I do these, uh, Ava, I will I will be on by 9 o'clock for sure. By 9 o'clock. So, what's going on, Wayne? How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Great to see you. And I see that the people that are commenting either are moderators or they are channel members. Please join the channel membership. It's a great way to kind of give back to the channel and I could be able to give back to you in future things. Things like Book Rescue. Uh, those things are funded by awesome people like you, the channel members. So if you did enjoy Book Rescue, please hit that join channel membership so that way we can continue to do awesome things like that. So uh, shout out to Wayne and Samantha, both channel members here. And if the channel members, you happen to be watching it on the replay, I appreciate you. All right, here we go. KT Samoa uh, says, figuring out distribution channels feels like trying to read tea leaves in the dark. Thanks for taking the time to break it down for us. It's much appreciated. I'm just gonna go ahead and put a generic. You are so welcome. Thanks so much for watching and commenting. Boom. Thumbs up, heart, boom. John Keeler, ah, my boy John, love that guy. Uh, John and I have been writing buddies. Every time we do writing sprints, I'm sure John's missing me these days. Um, we'll probably be back to doing writing sprints, I imagine by latest July, so. He said, Ingram Spark will definitely go for it once my book's metadata is rejigged. Uh, okay, so if you haven't watched the um, recent video, Self-Publishing on Amazon KDP Expanded Distribution, I do a whole new thing right now. I talk about expanded distribution. And I also talk about a way that you can forego expanded distribution to get the same reach while getting more revenue. So it's certainly something worth considering. It's kind of nice. I get a little, nice little paycheck there from uh, Ingram Spark for, uh, for um, sales through there. And I'll tell you, it's, it's a bit better than what I get through my KDP dashboard for expanded distribution. So I'm gonna hit that thumbs up, gonna hit that heart. Yep, and the more you know. Miss you, buddy. All right. Brennan Seward says, I'm about to write a fiction novel. I have a whole outline prepared and I wanted to watch this to know some info first. You were honestly really helpful and I was just wondering what would be a good way to get a following before publishing? And what do you think would be a good price point if my novel gets to be about 180 to 220 pages? All right, so uh, what would be a good way to get a following? Um, create a short reader magnet. Then use it to entice email subscribers. From there, build out your email list with newsletter swaps. Where you collaborate with other authors in your niche. I highly recommend Story Origin. free and has a ton of fiction authors. Yeah, come on now, Dale. As for price, study your niche. See what your competition is pricing and match accordingly. Boom, there we go, simple answer. I get a lot of questions where some people say, hey, how much should I price my book? Study your niche. There's like no universal pricing methodology. Tradpub does it that way. They, Tradpub has like a universal like, but then again, they also have a universal like, you have to have 50,000 words or you have to have 80,000 words. It's based on whatever the niche might be. And from there, they have like a set in stone pricing plan that they typically do, but you're an indie author, so you can determine what your price point's gonna be. So study the best sellers in your niche. See what it's selling for and price yourself accordingly. You don't need to price yourself so competitively that you're either far above or way too below. Get yourself in line so that way it just doesn't seem too far out of there. It's, it's what I like to call honoring the niche. Make sure that you're honoring the niche and you're not pricing yourself so stinking low that uh, you're
you're you're just looking out of place, you know? You don't want to have mustard on your face. Great to see you, Jan Marie Kelly. How you doing? She's got the moderator badge and she's got the uh, channel member badge. And I see the double bananas. That means she's been a subscriber, a member for a quite a few months now. So, all right, let's push forward here. 40X says, did they reduce the two free books down to one now? Yeah, it's possible. Um, I checked and you still get one audiobook and one audible uh, original. Yeah, I checked that one just not too long ago. Omar Chirpy says, hi Dale, I wanted to ask you two questions. Unacceptable, Omar. No, just totally kidding, man. Uh, I've been struggling to find answers for. I wrote a novel in third person. I'm planning to get an audiobook version made, but I really like the ones that have multiple voice actors and cast. Ooh, boy. Omar, I hope you got a little bit of extra spare change here. I see where you're going with this. It's not a bad idea, but when you deal with multiple voice actors and a cast, you're talking about more of an investment. So, is that option only viable for books written in first person POV? No, no, you can do it in both of them. I know some books have only have one narrator, and if it's possible, can I cast more than one? You can cast multiple voice actors for an audiobook, regardless of POV. The issue is money. It costs way more since you're hiring out. Uh, now, I don't know where to specifically to send Omar to, but I know there are some agencies that will specifically have like whole casts and such. So uh, look into um, voiceover agencies. Then you can hire out the agency and they send the talent. Yes, uh, it's just not worth it for one. Uh, oh, I'm really disappointed with the Audible membership options. Obviously, you can consume audio more quickly than reading, but they really limit that. They, they do, they do. Uh, you know, um, here's the thing is, I'm gonna backtrack here for just a second, talking a little bit about the Audible program. Um, I have a feeling, because see, they're testing this already overseas in one region, and I'm forgetting what region. It might've been like Sweden or India or something like that. It might be Germany. I think it might actually be Germany. They're doing one region to where it's actually going to be like a library-based system, kind of like KU is, Kindle Unlimited, in that um, author or readers can subscribe for a certain amount and they can check out a certain number of audiobooks that they can listen to and then return it. Uh, so uh, stay tuned. I see they're testing it out. So this means they're going to eventually roll this out. Now, how this is going to relate to authors remains to be seen especially since, and you're going to be hearing about this in the coming weeks because I'm already in pre-production for a video about Audiblegate and some of the fiasco that's happened over the last year. Essentially, everybody took the red pill. I think the red pill is where it shows you the reality of the situation. And what ended up happening is, is Audible was caught with their pants down and their hands inside the cookie jar. And that's kind of a brutal combination. Can you imagine that? What are you doing with that cookie jar that you got your pants down? So in any event, um, yeah, it's... It's, a, it's an ugly situation, but um, I anticipate they're going to find something that's going to be worthwhile for authors in the long term because they know that they've, they've really ticked off the indie author community and they're lawyering up. They've lawyered up, I should say. And Trad Pub's even thrown in a little bit of money on this one too. So yeah, so stay tuned to that one. We'll, we'll see how, how things you know, escalate here. All right, so then you can hire out, they, they send the, the talent. Okay, so I think I've answered that pretty thoroughly. Omar, thank you so much for the comment. I appreciate that, buddy. Steve and Sarah, always busy as possible here. Thank you so much for being a channel member, buddy. And uh, he gets the most hearts. You can see he's always active. I bet Emma Katie is Jacob Rothenberg, just a guess. I honestly don't know. Ask him. Uh, you know, that's one thing is Jacob's my buddy, but I, I never, I never ask him, you know, private questions. 
about what his pen name is and such. Uh, it was uh, some time ago. Uh, I uh, will just say this. He, he was a former peer of mine, probably still is a peer, but uh, a former friend of mine. And he had a pen name. And, uh, you know, I was able to find out what the pen name was. He was very secretive about it. But I thought, you know, I told a couple friends of friends, like mutual friends about his pen name. And uh, he didn't take too kindly to that at one point or another that I had shared that with them. And, uh, you know, and rightfully so. I guess that, that was not my business to share that. So anymore, I don't want to know about other authors' pen names unless they tell me. And if they do, I typically just keep it on hush-hush. It's not one of those things that I need. Hey, do you know Jacob Rothenberg's pen name? Like, no, there's a good reason why he does a pen name. He wants to remain anonymous. So, yeah, I don't know. Emma Katie, I, I don't even know what the name is. Uh, so... Uh, I can drop it inside the comments. Cool. Drop what? There we go. And I'm sure Stephen Sarrell is going to come back and watch this later on. What's up, Stephen, by the way? I appreciate all your support, buddy. Uh, I answered these ones. These are stories. Uh, let's come on down here. Victoria Virgo, passive income challenges. Are you saying that we should be aiming, on average, rank around 100,000? It's a good idea to have a book that ranks at or below 100k that indicates at least one sale per day ideally you want to be closer to number one above 100k it's hardly worth pocket change It all depends on your goals. Boom. Thank you, Victoria, for the comment. You get a thumbs up and you get a heart. Victoria Virgo. Wow, she was binge watching. Thank you so much, Victoria. I appreciate it. It's a good idea to... Okay, uh, I just read my own comment. Seeing that quite a few of these categories are iffy, does this still make a legitimate marketing strategy for fiction writing? Yes. It's about short reads, and uh, honestly, getting short reads is a good idea. Sci-Fi Fan says, how does money earned in a foreign country affect your taxes, for example, in living in the US but having an income for Australia or India? Hmm. Uh, you're gonna have to get with, get with your CPA, or feel free to reach out to Aaron. Her contact is inside the description. Info is in the description. Sorry, she doesn't man these comments. Yeah, Erin's a very busy woman and it's getting closer and closer to April, so I know that her, her attention is gonna be pretty split. Good morning, Walter Wyburn. I see you got the double banana stickers on that. And that means that you've been a channel member for a while now, so thank you so much for the support, buddy. You know what, every time, every time Walter Wyburn shows up, you know I gotta bust out the Walter Wyburn pen right here. Heck yeah. You see, I always keep that on, on standby. You know, it's funny, Walter, the other day, story time, guys and gals, the other day, I go and uh, I, I walk to get a, a lump cut off my face. Uh, this has actually been a couple days ago. Um, had to have a biopsy. Everything's fine, folks. Please don't, don't get all worked up. It's just going to make me look like this. Uh, but anyway, I'm walking back home. And uh, I'm crossing the street. And I see across the street, there's this raggedy-looking dude in some Carhartts. And the Carhartts look pretty dirty. He's a bit disheveled. Bald-headed fella. Looks pretty angry. And he's, he's leaned over. And he's messing with like an outlet on the outside of a, of a restaurant establishment. And... Uh, I think nothing of it. He finishes up whatever he's doing and we're walking along and, you know, he's ahead of me about half a block. And I look down and see, you know, what, what he was doing with the, uh, the plug. And it looked like he stuffed bread or something inside the inside of it. And I'm like, okay, well, that's kind of weird, whatever. And he continues to walk. And as he's walking, he looks at the restaurant because it's, you know, it's a pretty big area. And he just throws stuff, like just, just a handful of stuff at the, at the window. And uh, like whatever, and I'm walking along, and I see it's 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 cookies, like bits of bits of cookies. 
And you know, he's maintaining pretty good pace. I'm maintaining pretty good pace. So we're, we're pretty much about half block separated from each other. But when we come up to a stop light, he's able to kind of cross the street. And as he's walking across the street, I could hear him mutter something to a woman that's crossing him. And she kind of, she snaps her head to him and just keeps walking. She goes and she goes the other direction. I said, I'm gonna go ahead and veer off, go across the street, get away from this dude, you know? And um, he goes and throws cookies at the chick. And I'm like, whoa, like, I'm like, dude, you know, I don't say nothing. He doesn't get anything. I'm, I'm, I'm like, kind of iron, dude. I'm like, we don't need to fight here, but if you want to make it happen, let's do it. So um, get on across and, you know, the girl goes about it, her business. She doesn't even know that he threw cookies at her. And I'm walking and um, one point or another, we go across the street and comes over to a park to where our paths intersect. And somehow I must have gone past this pace because we came same time together at the same path we go walk through the park and it looks like we're hanging out with each other except with about six feet distance between the two of us he looks like a really angry man and we're walking along and there was a gentleman that comes along and he just straight up gives the guy the middle finger like right in his face and he just like he mutters some expletives and I'm like, well, it's time for me to start picking up my pace because this guy's just straight up looking for a fight. So I pick up my pace and I round the corner to go to Condado Tacos to get some victory tacos with my wife since I had a chunk of my face removed. Um, and I kind of like mentioned, you know, motioned to her, let's get into the restaurant right now because this guy behind me is, is a little bit off his rocker. So yeah, that was... That was a very interesting thing. So I, I came to sit there thinking about it as I'm walking along, I'm going myself. I'm like, man, if only I had my stun gun that Walter Wyburn had with me right now, dude would not be bothering looking or even doing none of that stuff near me. So Walter, I was thinking about you, buddy. I didn't have my stun gun. I guess lesson learned. I probably should pack next time. <laughs> You know, it's not too often things like that happen, but it made me think of you, buddy. But uh, folks, go over, make sure you go take a look at Walter Wyburn's channel. He talks a lot about financial stuff and uh, things like the stimulus. And uh, you want to go take a look at that. He's got a devoted following. So big shout out to you, Walter. Thank you so much. The stun gun is still just amazing. I, to this day, I just smile when I see it. All right. Uh, hi, Dale. Do you still capture your videos using Rev? Uh, yes, I do but only on the pre-recorded videos. I don't bother with live, so. Um, I'm sure Sackett's gonna come back and watch this. By the way, Sackett is, is such a cool guy. Thank you, Sackett, I appreciate your undying support. You're, you're, you're kind of like Kevin McGuire, man. You've been around for all, uh, quite a few years here. But um, the, the reason why I don't, uh, do captions on the live videos because they are longer and it's about a buck 25 per minute for me to go ahead. Um, you don't call those biceps stun guns? <laughs> biceps ain't quite quite as big as what they used to be. And uh, to be quite frank, I, I don't want to get into fights. Uh, I'm not trying to look for it. I'm getting to my mid 40s at this point and I'm sure that that dude probably would have handed me my rear end, uh, but not without me putting up a little bit of a fight. But um, yeah, uh, at any rate though, uh, so the reason why I don't do the live captions is, uh, again, Rev costs about a buck twenty-five. They have a cheaper auto captioning feature, but it, I mean, you get auto captions here on YouTube. So I just honestly, I can't see investing in something like that. Uh, my apologies to those that actually use that for, um, you know, being able to, like for instance, if you have hearing issues, having those captions really helps out. Getting the auto captions, unfortunately, does you no good because sometimes the auto captions are complete and total trash. Sorry. But um, though I'm making a fair chunk of change as a content creator and self-publisher, I'm not making enough to justify to spending thousands of dollars per month on my live videos. So, all right. So let's go ahead and switch it on over here. Man, I got a lot of 
comments today. Keto Camille Music. This video, this vid is very much appreciated. I just found out about Kodabi today. Kodabi is awesome. Wanted more info and like magic, here's your inf informative breakdown. If I decide to go with Kodabi, it will be after I publish the ebook I've been working on in Pages. A question sort of on the topic of the vid for anyone using Pages to export an EPUB. When using a, and the comment, I'm sorry, your comment got cut off. What was the question? Gets a thumbs up and you know, it gets hard. I've been looking for these keywords on my dashboard, but I can't find it and searching hasn't given results either. Where do you find it? Looking for these keywords. Be specific. What keywords? It's a thumbs up, no heart, because that's just confusing. Congratulations, Thomas, hugs, Connie, and Buffy. Uh, and of course, Thomas answers here. My boy, Thomas. Thanks so much, Connie. Uh, it will be totally unexpected, more appreciated than I could possibly say. This guy is the most humble guy on the face of the earth. I'm just going to say that right now. Thanks for watching and commenting. Thomas is the best. Get out of here, malware bites. Nobody wants you. Hey, okay, reply. And Thomas gets a thumbs up and a heart. Jimmy Fritz says, hi, I'm driving myself mad trying to post ebooks and POD to KDP. I've given up and I'm looking for someone to do it for me. Any suggestions? Um, contact my awesome assistant, Ava at heyyouava.com. She has services for that. Or done for you services like Archangel Inc. Uh, let's go ahead and put that on there. Thealinks.com slash Archangel Inc. Or book launchers. I better put the full address here, HTTPS booklaunchers.com for higher premium services. There we go. And let's make sure that we get Ava's stuff set here. Ava's here. <laughs> Ava, you know, you man these comments. Honestly, like, you know I'm just going to say your name. So just go ahead and shamelessly promote yourself, honestly. So you do great work. Uh, you know, the issue when you come to something, oh, hang on a second. I did not create the full link here, I guess, for book launchers. There we go. Let's try that out. Save. Huh. It will not give me the full address on that one. Well, there you go. Let's see here. Oh, hang on a second. I see what probably the issue is. Edit. Boom. 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 All right. Let's try that out. Should give me a full link this time. There we go. Awesome. Yeah, um, you know, uh, Archangel Inc. does great work. Uh, Book Launchers does great work. They are going to come at a much higher premium. I'm going to tell you that just right now um, for done for you services. And if you've already got all the stuff set, honestly, someone like Ava is fantastic because she has many packages that you can take advantage of. And uh, it's going to be a lot more cost effective. Uh, but you're going to want to make sure that you book her well in advance. All right. So don't wait to the last minute because Ava is a very busy woman. I keep her running right now. She is in the midst of doing a lot of work for me. So uh, sorry, I'm hogging her attention. Uh, how to do. Okay. So it looks like we are getting to last week's comments. All right. So we're going to do a quick refresh here. See if any new comments came in while I was talking. Well deserved. All right. So good. All right. So this is the point in which I'm going to go over to held for review. Held for review is mixed bag. All right. I just want to let you know that I've got a great filter that pulls people out that use expletives and crass language and things like that and uh, probably has some polarizing opinions. They're probably tossed into the held for review filter. So at this point, this is the, the point that I have to give you the 
Parental guidance is suggested, all right? So normally I'm family friendly, but I cannot account for any of the, the uh, things in held for review. So hide your children, it could get ugly. Here we go. Screen share, held for review. And hey, we're clean. We're clean, nothing to worry about here. So fan freaking tastic That makes another morning. It took us about 40 minutes to get through this. Normally, whenever I do this without going live, it'll probably take me about 10 minutes to probably burn through some of these comments. But uh, I put a poll out for channel members and quite a few people said, yes, they enjoyed this segment. So if you enjoyed this segment, you know, this is awesome. If you want to get involved in things like what the channel members did, because they decided the fate of whether I was going to do this or not, uh, make sure that you go on over to hit the join below this window here. You'll get more details about channel membership. Or if you're watching this on mobile, open up the description. You'll see at the very top, there's a link to channel memberships. Click on that. It'll send you all the details. Don't worry, you're not gonna get, you know, build or anything else like that out here. And it's all run by YouTube, run by Google. So that, that means that you're pretty much all safe as safe can be. I've actually had a number of channel memberships I've gotten from a lot of creators, Brian G. Johnson TV, Nick Nemen, Daryl Eves. Uh, so there's a, a really, it's, it's a great way to help support YouTube channels. And uh, rather than getting Patreon, it's the way to kind of do it here. And uh, so those of you that are channel members, I want to thank you. Thank you so, so much. Uh, I want to let you know too, of course, if you haven't had the opportunity to yet, uh, let me go ahead and I'm going to drop this inside the chat here. Go and watch the pilot episode of Book Rescue, all right? This right here has been my crowning achievement. This is one of those ones, I'm telling you, if you're an indie author, you're going to love it. And there's also an opportunity for you as an indie author to get a little bit of a leg up. And you're actually gonna find out about that over on Book Rescue. When you go over to that video, there's an actual application inside the pen comment as well as inside the description. Watch the video first though to see if it's going to be a good fit. Uh, I'm gonna tell you this, that we've got a lot of great strong candidates. I'm going to be have a business call here in the next week or so with a company that's going to be working with me besides the ones that I've worked with. I mean, Fiverr's definitely gonna be involved in the next two episodes. Um, it's, it's fantastic, but this, this company that's coming to the table is a big victory for all indie authors. And I am really absolutely over the moon that they're going to be considering working with us. Because if they're gonna be working with us, that means that the indie authors that we're gonna showcase in future episodes of Book Rescue are going to really be blown away. Um, I don't want to speak out of turn. I don't want to speak too soon because uh, I want to make sure everything's kind of put in a row. Uh, a few people ask me, when's the next book rescue come out? It's not going to be till later this year. It, it's going to take a lot of time. Uh, last, this, this pilot episode was really an expedited version of what we wanted to do. We just needed to get a pilot episode out so that way we could pitch brands and companies for sponsorship dollars as well as contributions. So getting that warning shot into the world was, it was a great way to kind of say, here's what we're planning to do. I'm going to tell you this, that Dan and I uh, and Ava uh, here at the Self Publishing with Dale team are feverishly working on just making this an amazing part of the community. While there are going to be some content creators that are busy flexing their paydays in front of their Range Rovers and all that other BS, I'm going to do the extreme opposite. I want to see about trying to give back to you, the indie authors. Because there's nothing more defeating than sit here and watch somebody who's sitting here eating from an all-you-can-eat buffet while you're starving yourself. To me, I think that that's just, it's shameless, it's shameful, and, you know, uh, I think that this is one of the greatest ways to kind of give back. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch Book Rescue, and you see why I'm so passionate about what I am and what I'm saying, and I really want to get everybody involved. So it means the world to me that you invest all your time, energy, attention, and sometimes if you're a channel member, your money into this channel. Uh, it really honestly just tickles me to death that you would do that. So a uh, big shout out to those that actually came in today. Candid Cashflow, AKA Ava Fails, my ever faithful assistant. I always appreciate you. Love you to death. Uh, Wayne Blinko, great to see you. Walter Wyburn, got the Walter Wyburn pen on, buddy. Uh, let's see here. Um, I also know Kevin McGuire popped in, Samantha Michaels, thank you so much. And anybody else that happens to be watching this, it's not a channel member, I, I appreciate it. Uh, if you're not able to do a channel membership, please don't feel guilty or guilted into doing this. Honestly, it's never expected, but it's 
always appreciated if you're able to. All right, folks, in the meantime, have a fantastic weekend. Look forward to this coming week. There's this new series rolling out about Amazon Author Central. It's going to send your eyebrows. You're going to love it. All right, let me give it five seconds before I go ahead and cut the stream. Four, three,